Well, good morning, everyone. It's my great uh, pleasure to open this uh, first edition of the World Policy Conference Health. And uh, I will do it first by uh, reminding the context of the World Policy Conference. The World Policy Conference, uh, since its uh, inception in 2008, aim at uh, improving the, uh, the global uh, governance. Well, what does it mean? It means that since the world is more and more interdependent and compared to the past, it is a matter, it's a qualitative change, at least as much as a quantitative change, it is absolutely essential to strengthen a regulatory mechanism. You can call that a control mechanism in physics. It is probably the word you would use so that uh, whenever there is a shock, the system is not totally destabilized and uh, subject to butterfly effects. Uh, in fact, uh, since 2008, that is the beginning of the WPC, we had many such shocks and uh, a number of serious butterfly effects. I just uh, mentioned uh, some of them. The first one was during uh, the first WPC in Avion in October 2008, that was the financial subprime shock. And then we had uh, in uh, 2011, we had the so-called uh, Arab Spring, which was a terrible butterfly uh, shock, and we're still uh, living through its consequences. We had a number of uh, such shocks with uh, uh, the, uh, we, within the European uh, Union framework, uh, we had uh, also the financial crisis, we had Brexit, and uh, we had migration shocks, and uh, the list is not uh, over. And now, of course, we are living uh, the most important of all shocks uh, since uh, the beginning of the WPC, which is the uh, COVID-19 uh, shock, which is uh, probably uh, the highest category of conceivable uh, shocks. So uh, we have to introduce health as a fundamental as a fundamental subject in all discussions, all reflection about the future of global uh, governance. Let me uh, remind a few classical aspects of global governance. Usually everybody talk of uh, multilateralism and we speak of uh, rescuing uh, multilateralism after Trump and so forth and so on. In fact, uh, multilateralism is not a very clearly defined concept. When we think of multilateralism, we uh, think first of the UN system. But the UN system is in principle legitimate, but it is relatively inefficient. And I say in principle legitimate because it is in fact less and less uh, legitimate because the UN uh, system as it, is, as it exists today was formed uh, after World War II and uh, the balance of power has considerably changed uh, since uh, 1945. And this is why you have more and more questions about the legitimacy of the P5, for instance, that is the permanent uh, members of the Security uh, Council. And this is only one of the aspects. So uh, within the multilateral system, you have a number of institutions of which uh, the WHO is part, uh, but uh, all these institutions are also questioned about both their legitimacy and their efficiency. And I think that such was the case in particular of the WHO just mentioned with the COVID-19 uh, crisis. But multilateralism as defined is only one aspect of governance. Political scientists speak more and more of plurilateralism. Plurilateralism means uh, well something like a cooperation, but not with all the members of the UN system, but with some of them. For instance, the G20 is a plurilateralism institution. We have weak plurilateralism and strong 
multilateralism. The OSCE, for instance, the Organization for Security uh, and Cooperation in Europe, is a weak plurilateralism organization. Now, the European Union itself can be interpreted as a very strong plurilateralism organization. And in fact, in my own judgment, the European Union is the best model for multilateralism in the future. That is when the set of countries is more and more integrated, uh, cooperation becomes more and more efficient, even if it has to go through painful stages as we see in the process of the uh, co construction of the European Union. And then uh, you have a third category, which is mini-lateralism. Mini-lateralism in the extreme is bilateralism. For instance, the best example I can give is during the Cold War, arms control. Arms control is, was a mini-lateralism concept. And uh, it was very efficient. It was starting to be very efficient between the United States and the Soviet Union at the end of the Cold War. And uh, it uh, created actually uh, a number of very interesting uh, developments. I'm talking of the uh, arms control, such as developing a common language between the two uh, uh, competitors, uh, such as giving each of the countries a droit de regard, that is, a legal and efficient framework for each country to look carefully at what is ha what's happening in the other country. And uh, of course, you had such uh, systems as the so-called red telephone, uh, which uh, allowed uh, easy communication in time of, uh, of crisis. And if I insist on, on this mini uh, lateralism or bilateralism aspect of multilateralism, it is because I really think that in the field of health, some, something like that might be requested. Uh, and uh, that is you know, a system that would allow major countries to look within other countries, especially to understand when the major crisis occurs, such as a pandemic, to be able to watch what is happening in, inside other countries at a very early stage which is something that does not exist at all today. Now, uh, as I said, the uh, WPC health is a new concept within the WPC system. Uh, we thought of it very early. Actually, we had already the idea of doing that before the pandemic uh, started. But with the pandemic, it is becoming a real obligation. So let me now uh, say very uh, briefly, uh, tell you a few uh, key aspects I see in this uh, global uh, uh, governance uh, issue with the, in the health sanitary framework, a few uh, issues that we will have to develop, not only today for this first edition of the WPC Health, but for the future. I will make actually uh, four brief points. The first one is, I will start with uh, the economic aspects of the, of the issue because nothing can be done if we do not have a clear understanding of the economic stakes uh, in, this, uh, uh, in, in this problem. My first remark, it should be a very simple one for anyone who have been uh, trained in economics is that, uh, of course, human life has no price, but it has a cost, and that's, that's the difficulty. Human life has a cost. And when you say that, you immediately raise the ethical problem, of course. Uh, and here, I would like to challenge the view uh, that uh, vaccine, for instance, uh, should be uh, perceived as public good, global public good. For me, the concept as a former uh, economic, uh, as a former mathematical economist, uh, I dare uh, say that the concept of uh, global public good is empty. There is no such thing as a global public good. Because what is a public good? A public good 
is something good which is non-private. Non-private, for instance, if I drink uh, a glass of water, somebody else cannot drink the same water at the same time. It is impossible. Now, if I take a drug, a pill, nobody can swallow the same pill at the same time. So it is absurd to uh, say that uh, uh, medicine, for instance, uh, is, uh, not, is, 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 is non-private. Of course, it is very private in, in that sense. Now, another, the, the other side of the definition of a public good is to be uh, non-excludable or non-exclusive. What does it mean? It means that uh, I cannot, for instance, if I'm walking in a public garden, I cannot exclude the other people walking the same public garden to enjoy it at the same time. But uh, again, in this uh, field of uh, medicine, of uh, uh, drugs, uh, pharmaceutical uh, products, and so forth and so on, uh, it, it is possible to exclude others from consuming the, the, the same goods. So I think the concept of a global public good, we could develop that at length, but the concept of global uh, public good is misleading. What actually we are really talking about is the issue of how to cooperate at a global level to make uh, medicine, for instance, more accessible. But then you are back to the issue of cost, and you are back, therefore, to the issue of how to share cost, who should pay for what. And uh, this, again, leads to the ethical problem immediately. So we should not have a naive uh, approach uh, to uh, this uh, problem to this economic dimension of, uh, of, of health, of health care. That's my first remark. My uh, second uh, uh, remark is that there are other kinds of dependencies. For instance, uh, if you look at the uh, Fukushima uh, uh, tragedy uh, in uh, 2011, uh, the, one of the first consequences of Fukushima was uh, to uh, was about uh, value chains, about the location of industries, and I think in 2011 already many people had identified this problem of vulnerability uh, of uh, globalization. Uh, which was related to this uh, loca lo localization issue. And of course, we uh, had exactly uh, the, same, uh, the same difficulty this year with the pandemic. And uh, everyone identified this problem of localization or delocalization of uh, pharmaceutical industry, uh, am among others. So this is partially an economic problem and partially uh, security uh, problem. And uh, should I remind everyone that uh, when uh, one speaks of multilateralism, one thinks first and foremost about security uh, issues. So we have a huge, a serious security uh, problem that is now clearly identified. The third dimension uh, that I want to stress is uh, the technological uh, dimension. Uh, the technological revolution is the most fundamental aspect of globalization. It will continue, not, not only does it continue, but it's accelerating. And uh, therefore, uh, to explore all the facets of the technological revolution uh, in, as far as health care, global health is concerned, is certainly and should be one of the most important missions of this WPC uh, health uh, endeavor. And here too, uh, we uh, find uh, the interdependence uh, problem and the vulnerabilities as associated with it, typically 5G. Now, whoever controls 5G controls the world in uh, some significant uh, aspect. And my, the fourth aspect is uh, the one I already mentioned several times, but I want to put it in a special category, that is the ethical uh, dimension. The ethical dimension is 
extremely important one in every situation where complexity is involved, that is, uh, in any situation where it is not easy uh, to say what is good and what is not good. Uh, and you have to exert a, a judgment to make sure it's partially philosophical and uh, in the same time uh, extremely human because we are all in our lives privately and uh, as uh, collectively uh, confronted with uh, difficult uh, choices. But again, uh, as far as health as far as is concerned, uh, as far as issues of life and death are concerned, these uh, ethical issues are uh, absolutely uh, at, the, at the forefront and should be at the forefront of any discussion. So uh, let me uh, now uh, conclude in, uh, in, uh, in two steps. The first one is uh, to, to tell you, to remind you what is the context, the global context of uh, global governance, including health in the coming years. This uh, global context is clearly the rivalry between the United States and China. That is going to be the most fundamental, the most fundamental uh, aspect of international relations in the foreseeable future. And it is not an easy uh, issue because the two superpowers of the 21st century are bound to cooperate in a number of dimensions because they are much more related to each other than were, for instance, the United States and the Soviet Union during the, the Cold War. But at the same time, the competition is very tough just because the stakes is who will be the number one power in the world sometime in the next two or three uh, decades. And I cannot imagine the United States to accept becoming the second power in uh, 2049, for instance. Why 2049? Because it will be uh, the 100th uh, anniversary of the victory of Mao Zedong in uh, China. And uh, my friend and friend of the WPC, Joe Nye, uh, talks, uh, likes now to talk uh, about uh, uh, cooperative uh, rivalry. Well, cooperative rivalry is a nice uh, concept, uh, but uh, that could work perhaps in the next few years for a number of reasons, but certainly not in my judgment in the longer term. So the issue is how, how to develop and strengthen global governance mechanisms in a context where you have both a major rivalry between two major powers and at the same, at the same time increasing interdependence. That's, that's, the big, that's the big challenge. And uh, I think it will make uh, the contradiction between the two aspects will uh, make everything extremely difficult, including in the health uh, issue. And I invite all of you today, but all the WPC friends, uh, in the future, the main WPC next uh, February in Abu Dhabi and uh, uh, other uh, sessions uh, 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 later on, I invite everybody to speak about these issues in a non-naive way. It's too easy to be naive. That's why uh, I challenge the concept of a global public good. Dr. Tedros in a minute will mention uh, also uh, the uh, the false, in my judgment, concept of global public goods. So uh, let us pay more uh, serious, careful attention to such uh, concepts. Now, the organization of uh, this uh, WPC session, in, this, in a minute we are going to hear Dr. Tedros, the Director General of the WHO, and I thank him very much for uh, having accepted uh, to uh, speak for us at the uh, beginning of this first edition of the WPC Health. And then we will have the first uh, session, which is called the lessons of the COVID-19, uh, such as we can uh, see them today. 
And uh, this will be followed by a, session, a second uh, session, which takes the issues of technology, economics, or the economic aspects of health and ethics as a coherent whole, as a co coherent framework. And uh, this uh, afternoon, after the very good lunch that we will share together, uh, we uh, will have a shorter uh, session on a more specific subject, which is called, which is uh, uh, on mental health and addiction, which is a, a subject which I think in the future will have to receive more and more uh, attention. And uh, when we thought of introducing this subject, it was not, uh, uh, it seemed to be relatively marginal compared to COVID-19, etc. But in fact, even with COVID-19, uh, COVID we, we are realizing that uh, these issues of mental health are in fact at the core of the consequences of the, of the, of the pandemic. And uh, that will be it uh, for uh, today's uh, first uh, edition. And now uh, it is my pleasure and uh, honor uh, to uh, give the floor to uh, the Director General of the W of the World Health Organization.